asked, so Sydney, what do you think? <laughs> Sydney paused momentarily and replied, I believe it is much more important to understand the question than to generate a myriad of unrelated answers. <laughs> Uh, neither say I've never given a talk in front of Sid Sydney. Um, <laughs> now, Roger Brent, our most recent recruit to the Center's Basic Science Division and co-founder with Sydney of the Molecular Sciences Institute Laboratory in Berkeley, will introduce Sydney more formally. Roger. Well, um, the talk today shows it's possible to create the future by trying to define important problems, thinking clearly about those problems, helping peers and students articulate their ideas, and working hard. Sometimes this work takes the form of articulating entire programs of, of research, as Sidney Brenner had already done numerous times before 1963, and famously in his letters to Max Perutz in 1963, proposing work on development in the nervous system in the nematode worm using genetics. How do I cause a slide to come on? All right. We, just ask the expert. Thanks. Okay, is that, is that legible? This is from June, more than 45 years ago. Now, I'd particularly like to draw your attention to the last two lines. But let's give time for people to read the rest of the bits. How, shall, how do I advance this to the next slide? So one can smile at the initial bit, if we could go back, at the reference to the two numerous Yanks, overpaid, not going to say the next bit, and soon yet again over here. But with the smile aside, this speaks for itself. It stands as one of the clearest pieces of scientific vision um, ever articulated during the 20th century. It was certainly up with some of the developments in physics in the um, earlier part of the century. Now, conspicuous big lines of research, which Sidney Brenner started or contributed to after that, include recombinant DNA approaches, combinatorial approaches, and his early and then ongoing and numerous contributions to the development of genomics, about whose future development he will speak today. There's no point in trying to enumerate these or even review the weight of them. One summary statement might be that to think about ideas and proposed paths of research that would be important if it bore fruit, to do that always possesses great merit. And if a person has 100 times as many good ideas as the other people working at things, that person's contributions will be greatly disproportionate. But it's also true that work of this type, by definition, has outcomes unforeseen by even the clearest-eyed predictor. Now here, one sort of unforeseen developments was scientific. Not only was Sinorabditis a fruitful system for studying embryonic development and aspects of the nervous system, as proposed, but also during the intervening more than 45 years, Work on the worm has come to contribute to research that's less fundamental, more medical, more applied. Although the worm lacks the large numbers of adult somatic tissues that depend on cells turning over, and thus is in general a poor model for most cancers, it's been a good model for other issues connected with maintenance of the adult soma, including cellular and organismic phenotypes connected with aging, and even for rather wacko things, such as controls over energy and fat usage 
as we'll hear from Mark Van Gilst. And of course, the Elegans also proved to be a great place to discover then unknown but common metazoan molecular biological phenomena with the importance of small regulatory mRNAs, an outstanding recent example. A second, maybe more important set of outcomes, and one that I suspect nobody foresaw the magnitude of, lies in the researchers whose lives Sidney Brenner impacted. There was still alive in the early 20th century, in the days of the young Brenner, on the fringes of empire, an unabashedly, unashamedly heroic tradition. And younger people could learn about the personal traits and accomplishments of great people, then inevitably called great men, people who had done or achieved or discovered great things. And by doing so, try to imagine that they could achieve great things themselves. There are hundreds of scientists now doing first-rate work whom Sidney Brenner influenced by teaching and by example, simultaneously human and heroic in precisely this way. Yes, my mic has been on, and although I was told, don't worry, no one can hear you, I believe a rather intimate conversation <laughs> was uh, heard in the next room. <laughs> so I apologize for that. I hope you did learn something from it, anyway. 